In this video I show how to make this stylized simplified electric guitar while using Maya for modeling and Substance Painter for texturing. Follow along the process and create your very own stylized guitar. Alright, let's get to it. I start out by placing the concept art in the front view as an image plane. The concept here is very rough, but I will be using it to get the general idea for the shape I want this guitar to have. I start the modeling by using the quad draw tool here in Maya and draw out the shape of the guitar by placing vertex points, which I then convert to polygons as I trace the shape of the concept art. The quad draw tool is very good when it comes to tracing concepts and working with relatively flat shapes, as this makes it easy to trace objects. I then change my preview to subdivision mode so I can see the model with a smooth preview and make changes to it to give it more visual interest. I also add the extra sections of the model by using simple polygon primitives and extrusions. When modeling anything, I always like to break things into pieces to make the modeling process even easier. Things can always be welded back together at the later stages, so working with pieces is always a good idea. In this case, I did not weld anything as I thought the pieces looked good just as they were. I continue to add some more details like the knobs by using primitives as well. I also used flat planes to create the strings. These are not very accurate to a real life guitar, but the idea with a stylized model is just to convey the overall shape of the object without necessarily being accurate. One last thing I did for the model was to subdivide and then remove any unnecessary geometry, especially on flat surfaces. This is an object that does not deform, therefore having a bunch of triangles works fine. I honestly did not go too far in terms of removing unnecessary geo, so I would thoroughly recommend anyone following along to just do a better job at this. Next, I proceeded to create the UVs for the model. I always recommend cutting your UVs wherever there is a near 90 degree change in the geometry. I followed this rule for almost all the objects here and then manually packed my UVs to utilize the space as much as possible. I always find that using the auto UV layout does not give the best results in terms of UV spacing utilization, which is why I prefer to do this step manually. You could also just use different plugins such as Rhythm UV to pack your UVs as well. The final thing here was to update the smoothing groups or the normals of the model. For this, I used a script for auto smoothing groups. Essentially, this just means softening the edges wherever there isn't a UV cut and vice versa. I also renamed all the models to have the underscore low suffix for the low poly mesh. I used a script for this as well, link for that is in the video description. Finally, I duplicated any pieces I wanted to reuse across the model and also offset the UVs for those by one. I also typically like to merge these together so that it's not confusing which parts are which. For the high poly, I simply duplicated the mesh and softened edges as well as beveled some of the models. I renamed those to use underscores high as the suffix and then exported that as an FBX file. In Painter, I load the low poly and bake while using the bake by mesh name setting. For the material, I used the 3DX stylized smart material 2.0. 
Link to that is in the video description. I made a few copies of the base color layer and applied different colors to different sections of the model. I wanted this to have some interesting patterns, so I experimented with a few different colors and shapes that will make this look more interesting. I also enabled lazy mouse while drawing some of the shapes to make it easier to draw on the model as I find that lazy mouse helps with that. For some of the patterns on the surface of the model, I also enabled height in order to give the illusion of normal map information in that section, and also to break up any of the flat surfaces on the model. It's always important to try to make even flat surfaces look interesting. Sometimes this can be done by adding wear and tear and interesting patterns on that. After adding a few more details, I called this one done. Keep in mind that most models made during my videos are not always polished, so I always recommend spending the extra time to make sure the model is clean and interesting. Here's the real-time render in Marmosa 2 bag. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please hit the like button as well as check out the links in the video description for more resources and useful courses. A short video will play after this showcasing my latest course, take a look at it as it may be beneficial to you. Alright, thank you all and I hope to see you in the next video. Would you like to learn the process for making simple stylized environments from scratch? Well, you see making something like this is actually really simple. All you need is a 3D modeling program such as Maya or Blender and put it all together in Unreal 5, which is free to use. Hey, this is only a 45 second ad so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. Click on the link below now and I will show you the exact process I used to make this simple environment. When you click that link, I will show you the steps for making an environment like this one in very little time. I will be showing you the modeling, block out of the level in Unreal 5, and also how to set up things like grass and leaves as well as the final lighting for your level. Like I said, this is a short video so I don't have enough time to explain everything here, click the link below now so I can show you the steps. Also, I don't know how long this will be up for, so click the link below now so you don't miss out.